Hello and welcome to another edition of Game Reactor Live. Today we're going to be playing Trials Fusion for about an hour or so, um, but we will also be discussing the upcoming games and generally the games we're looking most forward to. Um, and I think we should start with a trailer showing some of these games. I should be here. Hello and welcome once again to Games to Look For, the show where we run through the biggest and brightest coming in the month ahead. Goat Simulator from Coffee Stain Studios started life as a mere joke, but here it is, releasing this month and likely to attract as much interest as it does quizzical looks. There's not much to tell you about this one, other than the fact that it's a simulator with goats. Mm. All right, let's get going. Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends launches in the coming weeks, bringing with it the usual blend of epic battles and hack and slashery. The Elder Scrolls Online finally makes its way out of beta this month and will launch on PC and Mac, ahead of the new gen console launch planned further down the line. While it's an MMO, it also brings with it many staples that Elder Scrolls fans will know all too well. Whether that's enough to appeal to both MMO players and fans of the IP remains to be seen. Another epic fantasy series that comes to life this month with the release of Lego The Hobbit, which is landing on a variety of different platforms, will once again offer the distinctive brand of Lego flavoured action to gamers of all shapes and sizes. War of the Vikings is the follow-up to War of the Roses and features a streamlined control scheme and a greater emphasis on action. As the title implies, the game focuses on the fighting between the Vikings and the Saxons, with ancient warriors crossing swords and hurling axes at each other's heads. If there's a better embodiment of the Just One More Try school of gaming, we've yet to play it. Trials Fusion looks to take everything that made the original game so Moorish and adds new tricks, modes and a fresh setting to the formula. It's also, for the first time, heading to a PlayStation platform. It's a World Cup year and you know what that means. That's right, a double helping of FIFA. And first off it's 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil. There's a variety of World Cup centric modes and features on offer and a few interesting gameplay tweaks such as proper training sessions that we'd expect to appear in the future core titles starting with the still unannounced FIFA 15. <laughs> Titanfall, fresh from its launch on Xbox One and PC, will finally make the leap to Xbox 360 this month. Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn gets the next-gen treatment and will launch on PlayStation 4. Short Piece Ranko Tsukugimi's Longest Day arrives on PS3 as part of the Short Piece 2013 Japanese film anthology. Also hitting PlayStation 3s this month is 3D fighter JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Warlock 2 The Exiled repeats the turn-based strategy we saw in the original game but brings the series improvements to the table. Very useful spell, Fireball. Wargame Red Dragon takes the series' particular brand of alternate history strategy to a new Asian battlefield. The resurgent survival horror genre gets another new entry in the form of Daylight. Ubisoft will this month launch Child of Light, a fairy tale inspired RPG with a beautiful art style. 
action RPG fans will be clicking on demons in the incredible adventures of Van Helsing 2. And that covers most of the titles launching in the weeks ahead. We'll be back in a few weeks with a stack of games to look out for in the month of May. And that was some of the games that we're looking forward to. I'm quite sure you've got some favorites and feel free to write it down in the chat and ask us any questions if you have any. Yep. Um, I should probably introduce us. Uh, I'm Lee West and I'm together with Philip Lauert Polson. And yeah, well, we're going to talk a bit about the games we're looking forward to. The first one is coming out tomorrow and um, <laughs> I'm, it, it, it could be the most elaborate April's Fool joke ever, um, yeah. but that is Goat Simulator. And as some of you know, it started out as a joke from uh, Coffee Stain Studios. And now it's actually coming out as a game. And um, yeah, well, you control a goat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It just seems like a physics-based kind of silly game where you can run around controlling this goat, doing very crazy things. Uh, we're seeing the trailer here, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I know the tongue has, plays a big part. They've kind of done this whole tongue physics thing where the tongue's very sticky, so you can actually use it to, to drag and pick up stuff. And yeah, it's just basically, it looks like a guy who just went, all right, how can we make this as silly as possible? And it seems like he's succeeded pretty. I think it's pretty awesome. I mean, if, if, if you're tired of, of the generic first person shooters and driving games and stuff like that, this could be the fix to make you smile. This looks like it, yes. Um, well, I'm, I'm quite sure that I, I have to try it for sure. Oh yeah, um, for sure, yeah. I'm probably going to sit and laugh for about five minutes and then scrap the game, but it doesn't matter. Um, I've noticed that actually there's a lot of, of goat sims coming out also on, on mobile platforms at the moment, so it seems okay. like a lot of people are actually trying to, you know, catch in or cash in on, on, on the idea on this there. wave, yeah. yeah. And I think that's a bit of a shame to actually, you know, come out with games that are based on simulated simulations and goats. Yeah. Um, um, I mean a, that's a day before the release. Yeah. But so. well, that's always gonna happen somehow. If something looks like it's gonna be making money, there's always gonna be people trying to kind of make a profit off of other people's ideas. Yeah. But yeah. I think this is the real um, deal. So if you want that a goat simulated experience, I would probably go for this one here. Yeah. And it's, of course, coming out on a PC tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yep. The next one on the list is Dynasty Warrior 8 Extreme Legends. And um, it's going to be out on a PS3 and PS4, PS4 and, as far as And Vita as well, yeah. And Vita as well. Yeah. Do you know if it's going to be cross-buy or anything like that? Uh, no, I'm not aware whether or not they'll have okay. the cross-buy feature there. Okay. Um, it, it's becoming more and more kind of 50-50 um, whether or not a game is crossed by. Uh, it really depends on the games now. Before, just when they started introducing the program, it seemed like every game was crossed by. That's but true. now it's becoming more rare, I think, which is too bad because usually it's really a, what makes It's an awesome way to, to do it. I mean, I, I often sit there, you know, looking at a game and I'm not quite sure if I want to buy it. And yeah. as soon as it, it's cross-platform, I just hit the buy button because yeah, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll just have a go on it on my Vita or something. Yeah, you, you know, feel like you're getting more for your money as well. Yeah, it's definitely. Yep. And well, the video that um, is showing a bit of um, Dynasty Warriors 8, and I gotta admit, I've never played um, played the game, but I know it's epic battles and a lot of beat em up action combined with a bit of, of strategy. And that's about all I can tell about this game. But um, a few of the guys at the different game where I um, Sites are looking forward to this game and, um, well. Yeah, I mean, I've only played it a bit as well on the PSP when they had a version out for that and I had no idea what I was in for. Um, I never really got hugely into it, but it seems like there's definitely a huge audience for it. I mean, it's a very long running series. It is. Uh, it's very popular in, uh, in Japan. Um, it was actually one of the launch titles in Japan, I believe. Mm. I, I remember seeing it being streamed on the PS4 before actually the Japan launch of the PlayStation. So there's been there's been a lot of hype being built up about it uh, pre-release. So yeah, now it's coming to the West, and we'll have to see if there's probably a, a decent fan base for it here as well. Yeah. 
Yep. It looks a bit like, um, well, I personally, I'm, I'm not fond of, of the way that it looks like it's clones. I mean, it, it's pretty impressive that they've got so many characters on screen, but if they all look the same, I get a bit like, mm, yeah. Yeah, that's but, true. Yeah. Might not be the important selling point of this game, but... No, I don't think so. Well... You're beating people with a cart right there, right there. That's all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next game... Well, that's um, The Elder Scrolls Online. That's a big one, yeah. I haven't played that. I've got the beta key and I decided to wait. I want the full experience and I really want to, you know, end the Tamriel and, and have a look at everything yeah. with fresh new eyes when it's coming out. Um, and that's coming out on um, the 4th of April. And that's for PC and with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One editions following yeah, a short while after. TBD, yeah. 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 Yeah, I also had the, the chance of trying it. Um, I went to London to try it out, visited Bethesda, um, and did a little preview about it. You can read it on the site. Um, it was really interesting trying out the game. I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot more um, classic MMO than you, you would probably expect as an Elder Scrolls fan. But I mean, that's not saying that it's not a good MMO. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of MMOs out right now that seem to be trying something new Whereas this one here seems to be going a bit back to, you know, the roots of MMO, but doing it right. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I haven't played it since that preview build, but uh, I'm also very much looking forward to trying it out. I'm just going to be waiting for the, the console versions uh, before I, I yeah, jump in. Yeah, Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, wait for the console versions, but, but it's definitely the ones I'll be playing. On. Uh, I'm looking forward to having a good MMO on, on my PS4. Yeah. And I mean, if, if it's anything, I'm, I'm hoping really that we will get some of, of that single-player feeling that Skyrim, etc. had. Um, and of course, well, they've, they've promised that they're doing a lot of, of this stuff, like, like solo playing, um, uh, content for the solo player and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, in case you're wondering, in case you are planning on buying the Elder Scrolls Online, or maybe you even uh, pre-ordered it already, um, we decided to take a look at what's in the collector's edition of this game. Uh, I got mine today. Woohoo! And um, well, this is the box. Little. It's little a tiny little thing, thing yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I haven't actually opened it yet at all, um, but I think we could do that. Let's see. If we take a look at the side of the box, we can actually see that we've, we're getting some digital content um, also on, on top of what's in the box, of course. Yep. Um, you can play as an Imperial, and um, that means uh, you can basically join any alliance you want. Um, you get a white imperial horse. Of course, horses has all always been a stable of, uh, of yeah. um, the Elder Scrolls uh, games, and and I'm quite sure some of you remember the old DLC packets where, where you could buy a horse for insane yeah. amounts of money. Horse, um, yeah. but you're getting that one, um, which of course um, gives you increased speed when traveling around Tamriel. Um, you're getting a mud crab vanity pit. You might be able, I'm not sure if we can see it here. Ooh, that's that's going to be focus. difficult. Let's see. Can we get a focus on that one? We're trying. Or are we giving up? <laughs> there we go. There we I go. Think, I think we got it. Okay. Uh, you're getting a vanity uh, pet. You're getting a crab that um, can follow you around the world. Of course, that's a non-combat pet, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, that's um, just a little follower. And then you're getting Rings of Mera. And that's uh, basically if you complete a, a ritual of Mera uh, together with a friend, you will uh, receive bonus XP okay. uh, while playing. So that's a good deal. That's the digital content. And in this little Imperial Edition Let's make some box, here. We are, let's see what we're getting. Oh. We are getting the game, of course. That shouldn't come as any surprise to any of you. Well, I don't know. Bethesda have, uh, are releasing a uh, Wolfenstein collector's edition without the game in without it. Without so the game, really? Yeah. 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 I, I hadn't noticed that. No, no. So that's, uh, that's a good thing that the game is in there, at least. <laughs> so we're getting <laughs> the game, confirmed. Um, you're also getting a map. There's no doubt that this game is going to be 
pretty huge. And of course you can see, well, I think the recently most known region is Skywim, and yeah. you can see that on you the got top. got Cyrodiil, you got Morrowind, yeah. So, I mean, Elder Scrolls fans will be familiar with these regions, and now they're all Definitely. available, all in one, uh, in one uh, game. I think it's pretty cool that, that they're actually, you know, giving us... It, it feels a bit like already like a best of Elder Scrolls. Yeah. I'm just hoping that, you know, the online part lives up to... to but it's, it's, al it's always been in the cards somehow from, the, from what they've said. Like, they're doing one area at a time until they reach the point where they actually have machines strong enough to kind of do the whole of, uh, of Tamriel. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of what's happening now, and the fact that it's an MMO, I mean, it's definitely uh, it's a gamble for them, but we'll see. I mean, they can still continue, they can still continue doing their uh, single-player games on the side of this. All right, so we got Let's some see. bits and I pieces here. Let's see if I can, well... I will need to take this up, and uh, let's see, we've got a Dedrick Prince here, and that's, what is his name? Mulag Bal. Let's see if we can open this. We can't. It's, it's very... Uh, He's totally secure. He's secure. That, that, that's I'm how you get him. Yeah. He has to sit on your shelf like that. <laughs> and you get a, a weapon, yeah. and you get a... I think, yeah, there's a, there's a stand for him here. Let's try and take a look at it. It's going to make a lot of noise. Little discreet thing here. Um, see, this is a bit like Christmas. Except, <laughs> you know, except that they really tied this. Does anyone have a pair of scissors? Rasmus? Woo! <laughs> no luck. We're working hard. Uh, ah, yeah, okay, they've done it really tricky. It's not just like a twist, it's... it's he's never getting out of this. A pair of scissors, do you have one? Because this is... We can take a look at his tail. tail. That's, That's cool. Uh, this is probably the worst unboxing well, ever. There's more but, stuff um, in the bottom there in, in while we wait, wait for the scissors. Ooh, more loot. Let's see. Oh, oh you got him. Great. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's see, we're getting... Ooh, Ooh. a very, very nice a little bound artbook. That is really nice, actually. And yeah, it looks awesome. So I'm guessing this of Imperial Edition is a really nice thing if you're into Elder Scrolls and all the art and characters. I mean, there's a lot of text in there, too, so there must be a lot of background info and so on. Valen Wood, yeah. But so, yeah. Back to... Back to our... Dedrick Prince. And a new plus one scissors. Here he is. Let's see. Let's move this out of the way. And And in case you're wondering, this is plastic. It's not metal or anything like that. But it seems like a pretty good, uh, good quality for a statue. It does. I mean, sometimes you do get those collector's editions where they're very flimsy. I like he's actually having he's got maybe a, a dragonborn <laughs> in his hand. I'm not quite sure that anyone can actually see that. But we're not getting any help on the close-ups today. Mm. So, um, woo, we're getting it. Let's see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can we? I don't no, think it's got we all can't. The focus, so we we are understaffed today. So um, we're basically having cameras on manual, you know, and yep. just have to live with that. So yeah, it's here. And the guy is desperately running to here to see if he can get a close up of this. So I will place it here and see. 
we're having any luck. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to hold it up maybe. And Whoa. There we go. Oh. And we are waiting. Almost there. There, there we are. Almost. And you can see the tiny dragonborn going. Wah. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, what you get with the Imperial Edition here. What's in the, uh, the those are just the codes, those little pieces of... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm quite sure. Um, that's okay. probably... Um, I have some quick... Uh, yeah, quick guides and uh, of course uh, Imperial Edition exclusive codes and stuff like that. Yeah. Let's see if there's so the I am going to be playing this and unpacking this once again uh, during the weekend. Then I'm looking forward to actually playing this game. I've, I've I've, when you can see the trailer here, I'm yeah. not quite sure if um, we're seeing it right now. Yeah, I do love snow in games. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I mean, even if you. It's a beta B roll. Yeah, it's beta B roll. Yeah. Yeah. But even I mean, if if you're looking at at this, I mean, World of Warcraft, the Dwarven District, and stuff like that yeah. was was some of my favorite parts of that game. Yeah. I just have a thing with snow. It doesn't definitely. I mean, this is is the beta. Um, we're having a look at here, and it doesn't look that impressive compared to like Skyrim. But of course, this is going to be an MMO, and uh, I'm just hoping the gameplay holds up. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually MMOs get away with having slightly less uh, impressive visuals over the just just for the sheer size of the world and the activities you can do there. So. And then, of course, we're just waiting for PS4 and Xbox One to show up. Yes, and, um, very much. And Until I'm then, it's the PC. Yeah. Yeah. The next game on the list is, um, well, it's another game from um, Telltale Games. And, of course, it is uh, Lego The Hobbit. And it's yet another TT Games, um, yeah, I should say TT Games um, <laughs> production. And um, it's looking like it will be a lot like all the Lego games we already know. Yep. They, they have picked a few things from, um, from earlier games and added a, a few new features. Uh, in case anyone has playing, uh, played um, Lego the movie uh, video game, um, you might have noticed that there were so-called mini builds that you could basically um, pick up stuff and turn it into Tiny mini builds, um, Lego okay. mini builds, uh, stuff that you actually could uh, build in, in with real life uh, Lego cool. blocks as well. Yeah, um, they're adding that uh, again or using that again in this game. But I think the biggest new um, addition to this game is going to be how co-op feels. Um, they are focused on dwarfs this time, of course. Yeah, um, and they have added a lot of, of new mechanics to the um, to the general fighting. Uh, first of all, um, you get sort of, um, as you can see here actually, um, whenever you have a puzzle sometimes you, you need to get up uh, on a high ledge and, and you can basically add four of these dwarfs on top of oh, each okay. other and, and, and make kind of a human ladder. That's cool. Um, you can also grab weapons um, that are so big that you wouldn't be able to, to wield them as one character, but if you join together you can actually wield those. Yeah. Um, you are getting some sort of, of when I played the game, it actually reminded me most of um, old uh, wrestling tag team features. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, basically, you know, they're going to hit someone and, and the two dwarves will just, you know, use each other as weapons. And, <laughs> and that's a cool idea, I think. Yeah. It looks like it will be the usual good TT Games quality on, on LEGO games. And I'm quite sure that, that most of our viewers know if they need another LEGO game in their collection. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's coming out on the 11th of April, and it will be out on PC, Xbox 360, PS3, 3DS, PS Vita, Wii U, PS4, Xbox One. So basically, all forms Everything, that you, yeah, you can want. get a hold of. Yeah, yeah. It looks good, and of course, um, this is based on I think the first two. First two um, the Hobbit movies, and they're going to conclude it in uh, yet another game later on. Okay. As far as I know, they haven't really confirmed this, but this is definitely not um, ending. You know, it's it's not the whole trilogy or anything no, like that. It would not make sense either to release the ending before the movie gets released. That's I true. think there's probably a deal there going on. Definitely, yeah. yeah. 
And then we've got another war game. Or, oh, well, it's War of the Vikings. And um, it's a follow up to War of the Roses. And um, it says here that it features a streamlined control scheme and greater focus on action. So it might be a little less um, strategy heavy compared to, to earlier Paradox um, titles. Okay. Um, and as the title implies, it focuses on battles between the Vikings and the Saxons. And um, it's out on PC and Mac, and that's about all I know about this game. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the title myself either, but it'll be interesting to see when it comes out, how it does. But I know some of our strategy freaks at, at the different sites, they are looking forward to this one, and I think they've got a, a pretty good uh, reputation at Paradox oh, for yeah, making for sure, yeah. solid games like this. It may, might, might not be, you know, um, that impressive from a, a graphical standpoint, but I mean, if the gameplay is top notch, that's exactly really graphics on everything. Exactly. Not a lot of gameplay in the trailer. No, though. unfortunately, not a lot to show at this point. So on to the next one, and that's Trials Fusion. Yep. And I know that tons of editors love this game. And it's it's quite easy to understand why because it it's got um, it's got that just one more game uh, just one more game yeah you know, just one more it. try yeah, and, yeah. and um, it's all about you know seeing scores doing stunts and what I really enjoyed about the previous games was the environments they they look awesome and as you can see here we're we're taking a more futuristic approach this time yeah it seems and, so. Um, I mean, even the title screen has got drones and stuff like that. So it's got a bit of a, a sci-fi feel to it, but, but it's got all the, the usual gameplay that we've come to, to love from the series. Yeah. Um, actually, we're, of course, this is the game we're going to be playing shortly. We're just, we've basically got one more title in, in the game. Yeah, so we'll to. get more into this game exactly. as we're playing it. And we'll be, and we'll be playing the, the beta, of course, not the full. Um, yeah, 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 that's true. And, um, well... I've only played uh, original a few times, and I think you haven't played it at all. So you will be a total yeah. noob on, on so this one. So it'll be it'll be interesting. I had a bit we of a go. We will fail. <laughs> had a bit of a go just before the stream went live, but uh, yeah, it didn't go too well. So yeah, you'll have a lot of fun watching. So you can sit there, you can complain in the chat, and you can make fun of us. <laughs> and we're looking forward to that. Um, that was Trials Fusion, and of course that is from the Finnish developers Red Links. Red Links, yeah. And um, they've done a pretty good job every time they've released a game like this. So um, yeah. we are looking forward to this one. And then we've got the final one, and that's 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil. And I am absolutely not a football fan soccer fan or a sports fan in general on, on TV. So I have, well, of course you're getting <laughs> the, um, the licensed teams and, and everything on, on this one and you're going to be able to play World Cup Brazil. It, it's not going to be DLC or, or any uh, expansion to, to FIFA 14. It's actually going to be its own game. It's a full retail game, yeah? It is, yes. Do you know anything about it? Do you love football as much as I do? Uh, well, yeah, I'd say as much as you do in yeah. the way that you just described it there. I'm, I'm not a soccer fan at all. Um, I don't, uh, I'm not into sports. I mean, I can fully understand the, the popularity of the titles coming out and the, uh, yeah, how, how big they are. So I can definitely see this as being a huge release. But personally, I'm going to give this one a pass, probably. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's Actually, if, 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 I, I would make a mention now that we're at this, uh, the news in uh, NHL, the yeah. hockey game from EA is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, if you haven't tried it, I would recommend trying that one, especially because they've got sort of a classic mode that okay. um, feels a lot like the old Mega Drive games. Okay. So it's super simple, it's super fast, and, and it's lacking a lot of the complicated rules. So it's just perfect, you know, for sitting down, having some multiplayer fun. And uh, I, I really think that was um, an awesome addition to an already great game. Yeah. Um, again, I don't care about uh, ice hockey at all, um, but I like that game and I like it for, for the sheer uh, arcade quality of that mode. So yeah. I could recommend that if you're looking to get into a sports game, but you know, really don't care much about sports. Yeah. 
I think that concludes our games to look forward to for um, for this month. Yeah. Um, we've got um, the trailer as you saw in the beginning, and we're going to run that again, so you can take a short look, and then we will be back well, with. Um, short ones in the end. You want to take that? Yeah, we could. Yeah. Uh, Les is um, telling me that we've got some short notes and uh, I'll just read those up and yep. uh, of course it's Titanfall. You might know that um, shooter from EA and it's absolutely amazing. I love that game. I think it is a fun shooter and it's just crazy enough and different enough to not be another Call of Duty shooter. Um, it's out on Xbox One and PC of course. In Denmark, we are not having the Xbox One until September, but the lucky guys in England and uh, Germany, etc., uh, as far yeah. as I remember, are having it now and having a blast on this one. Um, but it will make its leap to Xbox 360 this month. Okay. And um, I'm sure some of you are looking forward to that. We don't know much, of course, uh, it will be scaled back graphical quality, but Obviously, I mean, if yeah. the gameplay is, is the same and if it's as fun then it looks like you're in for a ride. Then we're getting uh, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, A Realm Reborn, and um, it will finally launch on PlayStation 4. And that's actually an MMO. I might give a chance on the PS4. Yeah. I gotta say though, I wasn't, um, I wasn't too fond of the game on PS3. Uh, I don't know if you've played it. I tried out the beta on the PS4. Mm. Um, it's very, um, I actually, I actually enjoyed my time playing it. The only thing that kind of put me off getting into it was the whole paid subscription. I'd see myself playing this as a free-to-play title probably um, with uh, the obvious uh, microtransactions and, uh, and optional mm. DLC packs. But as a, um, as a subscription-based game with Elder Scrolls coming out and so many, many other games out there that require subscriptions, I'm, I have to kind of weigh it all adds up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it definitely felt good to play. Kind of a good MMO again. It seemed very uh, polished, very uh, complete. But, um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to wait. Have a bit of a wait and see attitude towards this, and uh, see if, if it'll stop being a pay to play or if it'll drop in price or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing. The, the remote play on PS Vita might be something that makes me want to uh, give it a go. Yeah, I mean, um, I, mean I do play uh, DC Universe Online with remote play, another MMO on the PS4, oh yeah. and that works just fine. I and mean, that's free to play. And yeah, and exactly. That's, that's where I can get. And yeah. I, actually, I actually do have a subscription there because I do prefer getting all the content that they have at this point. Oh, okay. So basically, you, you, you prefer a model where, where you are able to, you know, pick and choose if you want to play. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean, DC Universe has done it when, well. I, I think my biggest problem is, I think I've mentioned that to you before as well, is that whenever I get into an, an MMO, um, I need to be hooked on the game. Yeah. And I'm usually not hooked within the first couple of weeks. Um, I just, you know, jump in and out, play half an hour once in a while, and, and, and then when I get hooked, it's usually about a month after release. And that's the problem for me with, with these games where you have to pay a subscription. That is, it usually runs out when I'm beginning to, you know, think, hey, maybe I should play this a lot. Yeah. And that means that I, I, I won't do it because I'm not sure yet. So, so, I mean, these, we've talked about this before. I really think instead of having one free month, they should have like um, 40 hours of game time for free. Yeah. So actually, it, it would be the actual play time instead. Yeah. That actually do, sounds like a good solution to that. I basically, I, I mean, I was all, um, I was really going to enjoy uh, a realm reborn, and I was looking forward to playing it. And just the intro was so long. It, did, it does and take a long time to get into, yeah, for sure. I, I really, I, I just wanted to go out and hit a few balls or something like that, you know. <laughs> And, and I just got put off by, by having to wait and wait. And I, I know it looked gorgeous and stuff like that, but it just ne never, you know, caught never me. Never caught you, yeah. Um, but I might give it a go again on, on the PlayStation 4 because it seems like they did, um, they did a lot of good stuff on this one when, when they're actually re-releasing it or, or fixing yeah. it. Um, well, it seems like a lot of MMOs, again, to bring back TC Universe Online, it also got a kind of polish update and a bit more content and so on. It seems like it's a thing they're doing now with uh, the release of the next-gen consoles. 
It's just kind of like to bring up the graphics fidelity and kind of bring, bring players back. I think that's a great way to do it. And I think DC Universe had a huge surge of, uh, of new players because, again, it came out at a time where there wasn't a lot of games on the PS4. Now Definitely. we're seeing the first kind of uh, paid subscription-based MMO on the PS4. I think so it was great on, on, on DC Universe Online that you could actually, um, you know, import your character. Yeah, I exactly. remember playing it eight years ago on the PS3 and I was... Uh, when I logged in, it was like, do you want to import your character? Hell yes, yeah. I do. But and that was play, enough yeah, reason for me to, you know, sort of give it a go again. And you're playing on the same server, so your friends that you had on the PS3 are playing with you still. You're just seeing it in a much prettier uh, version and, a, and l less laggy. And sometimes, like, some of the graphical issues are not present on the PS4. That's true. Let's see. Um, then we've got a short piece, Renko's uh, Tsushima's Longest Day. Arrives okay. on the PS3 as part of the short piece 2013 Japanese film anthology, and again I think we should just take a look at the trailer because I've I've seen the trailer and that looks pretty amazing, <laughs> um, but other than that I have no idea um, what this is about, which should be quite obvious from the way I pronounce this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not a lot um, of uh, of information there. And yeah. All we could see was an exclusive title for the PS3 coming out on the 18th of April. Yeah. So that's short Peggy piece. 16. Um, let's see. Then we've got um, 3D Fighter uh, JoJo's a Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. And um, let's take a look at that. Street Fighter territory. And it, feel, <laughs> it, it feels a bit like that. I've mentioned. I've heard the title mentioned before. George's Bizarre Adventure. I. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anybody in the comments who are familiar with the series. Let's take a look. Yeah, we, we're definitely behind on reading the comics. Yeah, and, sorry uh, about that. Comments. <laughs> so. um, but yeah, the legal model from the second film was released several months before the movie came out. That's true, but it doesn't give away the plot really. Um, and then someone is saying the evil within looks really promising, I think. Yeah, horror games are the big thing at the moment. And they're actually so getting a too. revival with um, stuff like, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Outlast. PS Plus? Yeah, Outlast. And uh, games like that, it seems like um, they are bringing back the horror in horror games. Yeah. And I really love that and I'm looking forward to, personally, I'm looking forward to um, Alien Isolation or Alien Isolation. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it could be what we always wanted from an alien game. Coming in October, I believe. I think it's, it's yeah, it, it's a bit away still. Yeah. So it's not one of this month's upcoming games. Unfortunately. Um, Leah got a question, is Last of Us coming to PS4 World? The Last of Us has not been confirmed officially, but it doesn't. I, I don't think it matters anymore because we've seen pack shots of the PS4 edition, um, a complete edition with um, all the DLC and stuff like that on, on several uh, retail websites. So I don't think there's any doubt that it's coming. Um, no, for the, PS4. the cat's out of the bag, kind of. Yeah. We're just waiting for the official word. Exactly. And. Um, FIFA 14 Brazil, well, I love milk, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're milking it. Um, let's see. <laughs> Someone is saying, is this an ad for Titanfall or what? Well, I mean, as much as we say when we don't know a game, we say when we love a game as well. Yeah. And also, if we really don't like the games, we also mention that. So um, take it as you want. We like Titanfall. Go buy Titanfall. <laughs> no, oh well, that was a bit too much, wasn't it? <laughs> um, a little bit of money comes in from the side yeah, here. Yeah. There. Kishing. <laughs> Thank you, yay. Um, let's see. And I, I think, I mean, that goes for the same way that we're saying, uh, well, FIFA Brazil, we couldn't kill this. Mm, uh, no. <laughs> so I, I mean, again. But, um, so, so EA loves us a bit, you know, and, and they hates us a, a little, you know. Yeah. It's sort of, mm, yeah. Um, let's see. Everybody can get a cheap now on PS4, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's all keep the fingers crossed that the Alien Isolation game will deliver. Otherwise, I will boycott Sega for good. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, that, yeah. It looks, so, it, it, it looks promising. I mean. It does. It does. And uh, again, it's not coming out this month, so don't go, you know, holding your breath or something like that, you know. No, that would be tough. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, 
Let's see, we've got some turn-based strategy coming up with Warlock 2, The Exiled, um, and that should bring some imp improvements to the table. And, well, again, let's take a look at the trailer from Paris. Wise man said it never changes, but he's dead, eaten by a dragon in war. I've seen things out there, horrible things. Rats the size of wolves. Wolves the size of cities. Cities shaped like wolves. And turtles so big they make the wolf cities look like rats. But that's war. Turtle war. All of these frightening and strange monsters can be defeated on your path from exile. So long as you've got one important thing. Really I am not a big fireball. Uh, very see, useful see, spell. Fire stuff like that. Yeah, it gives you a bit of an idea. Again, again, I'm not familiar with this series. Um, As you can hear, we're not really that huge strategy buffs. No. Um, Unfortunately, no. And that means that the next one is an alternative take on Asian history, and that's a war game with a dragon, and that's yet another game we don't know a lot about. Um... Let's see if we... It wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear it, yeah. Looks no. awesome. I see. So. And yet another trailer for for cutscenes. I really want to see a bit of gameplay. Uh, Jeff was writing, he forgot about the Xbox 360 version. So he, he thought we were talking about the Xbox One once again. Uh, ah, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I, I can understand why he, <laughs> he felt like it was being an ad. Uh, anyways, war game with Dragon. That was the trailer, um, and well, we just spoke about it just before um, yeah. that the survival horror genre is getting kind of a revival, and yeah. that brings us to Daylight, yet another one of these games that hopefully will make us scream. Yeah, again, this game here has been um, kind of uh, said to be a bit of a copy of Outlast, but actually, after having read up on it a bit and uh, read some interviews about it, it actually seems pretty interesting the way it works. Because these uh, worlds are randomly generated, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like there's more replayability. Um, so all the scares are also random, you don't know how it's going to work. That's cool. Um, and there's going to be very different environments. I mean, we're seeing a lot in the trailer here from an asylum and so on, but reading an interview from the, uh, uh, I, th I believe it was Jessica Chobot, uh, who's uh, made the story for the game. Jessica Chobot also made famous for licking a PSP back in the day when that came out. Uh, but yeah, sh um, and also I think it's kind of cool they have this um, system in place for the PS4 with uh, when you live stream the game, kind of like we've seen with the um, zombie game that came out recently. Uh, how what was the name again? Apocalypse. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Dead Nation. The Nation, Dead Nation, yeah. Yeah, where the, uh, where, Apocalypse the yeah, where the viewers can actually interact with the stream. So actually, with this game, ah, okay. they, they haven't gone yeah. into detail exactly how, but there'll be a possibility for the viewers to kind of initiate jump scares for the players. So that's cool. So the viewers can so kind of can jump out and So whenever you feel like move. he's sitting there streaming and being too confident, you yeah. can just give him help. Yeah, exactly. That's so good. that's kind of a cool uh, cool feature. Um, so yeah, I'm actually interested in seeing this. And I'm actually surprised and a lot of people were expecting this to be the PlayStation Plus game of the month. But again, they're, try they're obviously trying to vary their, their uh, Plus content. We've already had Outlast yeah, bringing exactly. this. They were, they get uh, and also Dead Nation, which is also kind of a zombie horror. They want. Yeah, they should. They, they, I mean, I wouldn't mind, but they should try to add another game. They, they, they need to kind of game. bring in everybody. Yeah. They, like what they really exactly. need at this point is a racing game for the Plus as well. Um, That's true. But again, the PS4 basically just needs its racing game. I mean, Drive That's Club true. is the the PS but Plus uh, game. Drive Club is going the Gran Turismo way. It's going, you know, be. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. We will be delaying it. It will be out soon. It's not coming out this year, and uh, well, it it might. Yeah, we'll but see. We don't know what is going to happen exactly. I, I mean, I haven't. Uh, when you remember 
how many delays the Gran Turismo series have had. I mean, it's, it's easy to compare it with this and go like, yeah, we yeah. need to be waiting forever. But again, with, with um, Gran Turismo, that was a Japanese-developed game. Exactly. And the Japanese yeah, yeah. developers seem to be good at, I mean, Last Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With <laughs> Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, again. Last Guardian forever. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be exciting to see when that comes out. Oh, well, then we've got the fairy tale inspired RPG from Ubisoft, um, and uh, that's Child of Light, and it uses the, um, what is it called? The, well, I think it actually was at the Ubisoft the Light Framework or whatever it's called, that right. actually allows um, the artists to basically put the art they produce into the game without, oh, okay. you know, a lot of trouble. And, and you can really see it, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it really does, yeah. Storybook. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, the enemy there. So it's definitely something that stands out, and I think it's nice to see. Um, I've always had a lot of respect for Ubisoft. I think they're doing, you know, apart from doing all the big blockbusters, they're also giving us, you know, some really special games. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very versatile, it seems. Like they've got games in all ends of the spectrum. Got the, exactly. the so war game kind of ghost recons going on. And it's and kind of if, if they know they can't compete, they're not doing it. Yeah. I mean, they're not doing football games for a reason. And, and they're just, you know, they're taking the, the channels that they know they can produce some, some quality content in. Yeah. At least that's how I feel. I mean, some people will always, you know, uh, feel like they're just milking Assassin's Creed or something like that. But, but I think in general, they're doing an. But Pretty I mean, Assassin's Creed games got good again, and those games are what keeps the, paying the bills, so we can get games like this one here as well, so they can take more risks. And of course, they com confirmed the next uh, Assassin's Creed Unity uh, yeah. as well, and we've got rumors floating around of uh, Assassin's Creed Comet. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the first one, Unity, is coming out on next gen and, and PC, and uh, the unconfirmed Comet should be a game for the older consoles like PS3 and Xbox 360. But yeah. we don't know much about that yet. No. Um, oh, another football game, Football Manager 14. Right. I think that's the classic, oh yeah, well it is. It's, it's the classic game coming out on Vita. So if you're into buying and selling players and making it to the top of the league, that's I mean, the game for you. It's definitely, again, like FIFA, this here is a very popular game series. Um, not something that I'm into, again, not being into the game at all, like the soccer as such, it's hard to get into this whole idea of it, but it seems like it's a very popular genre, this whole manager, like sports manager yeah. games. So getting it on the go is probably going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people out there. Yep. The last game is um, yet another action RPG. I'm saying yet another. Well, the, the expansion for Diablo was just released, and uh, yeah. well, I think um, the incredible adventures of Van Helsing has got you know that whole uh, torchlight Diablo feeling. Yeah, and sure. um, this is of course the incredible adventures of Van Helsing 2, um, which will be coming out this month as well. I know we've got a preview and, and preview plan for this. Um, and the first game got got pretty positive um, reviews all yeah. around. So, I mean, it's always good with also like several options in the genre. I mean, it's not just all about Diablo and Torchlight. There's also this. I mean, and again, yeah, I've also heard positive things about the series. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this one turns out. Exactly. New level cap. Ooh, that's always something we like. <laughs> and and it, at the same time, it's something you hate, isn't it? I mean, it, whenever there's a new expansion coming out or something, and, and you've been standing around the auction house for eight years doing nothing yeah. as high level, and, then, and then, then suddenly there's a new level cap, and you're going, woohoo, new level cap. Oh no, all my gear will be worthless. Yeah, soon. exactly. The grind starts <laughs> so, again. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's why you're playing these kind of games. <laughs> exactly. Really, so I don't mind. I think we got it. Um, yeah, that's about most of the games coming out this month covered. Yep. And um, I think we should just take a look again at that um, compilation trailer that our GRTV guys made. And after that, we will be playing Trials Fusion for about an hour or so, I think. Yeah. Yep.
Hello and welcome once again to Games to Look For, the show where we run through the biggest and brightest coming in the month ahead. Goat Simulator from Coffee Stain Studio started life as a mere joke, but here it is, releasing this month and likely to attract as much interest as it does quizzical looks. There's not much to tell you about this one, other than the fact that it's a simulator with goats. Mm. All right, let's get going. Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends launches in the coming weeks, bringing with it the usual blend of epic battles and hack and slashery. The Elder Scrolls Online finally makes its way out of beta this month and will launch on PC and Mac, ahead of the new gen console launch planned further down the line. While it's an MMO, it also brings with it many staples that Elder Scrolls fans will know all too well, whether that's enough to appeal to both MMO players and fans of the IP. Another epic fantasy series that comes to life this month with the release of Lego The Hobbit, which is landing on a variety of different platforms, will once again offer the distinctive brand of Lego flavoured action to gamers of all shapes and sizes. War of the Vikings is the follow-up to War of the Roses and features a streamlined control scheme and a greater emphasis on action. As the title implies, the game focuses on the fighting between the Vikings and the Saxons, with ancient warriors crossing swords and hurling axes at each other's heads. If there's a better embodiment of the Just One More Try school of gaming, we've yet to play it. Trials Fusion looks to take everything that made the original game so Moorish and adds new tricks, modes and a fresh setting to the formula. It's also, for the first time, heading to a PlayStation platform. It's a World Cup year and you know what that means. That's right, a double helping of FIFA. And first off it's 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil. There's a variety of World Cup centric modes and features on offer and a few interesting gameplay tweaks such as proper training sessions that we'd expect to appear in the future core titles starting with the still unannounced FIFA 15. <laughs> Titanfall, fresh from its launch on Xbox One and PC, will finally make the leap to Xbox 360 this month. Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn gets the next-gen treatment and will launch on PlayStation 4. Short piece Ranko Sukugimi's Longest Day arrives on PS3 as part of the short piece 2013 Japanese film anthology. Also hitting PlayStation 3's this month is 3D fighter JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Warlock 2 The Exiled repeats the turn-based strategy we saw in the original game but brings the series improvements to the table. Very useful spell, Fireball. Wargame Red Dragon takes the series' particular brand of alternate history strategy to a new Asian battlefield. The resurgent survival horror genre gets another new entry in the form of Daylight. Ubisoft will this month launch Child of Light, a fairy tale inspired RPG with a beautiful art style. Action RPG fans will be clicking on demons in the incredible adventures of Van Helsing 2. And that covers most of the titles launching in the weeks ahead. We'll be back in a few weeks with a stack of games to look out for in the month of May.
So, a lot of good games coming out, at least yeah. some we're looking forward to. Um, I can see in the chat that someone is asking uh, about Far Cry 4. Yeah, there's been some rumors about this, and it's going to be in Himalaya, and uh, That's true, we'll yeah. be having snow and elephants and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I am expecting you know, Ubisoft to um, come out with something about this game on E3. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Um, and of course, someone is saying Arkham Knight looks amazing. Yeah, we've got, I don't know if we, we've got Danish magazine actually here. And um, actually, we've got a, a fun feature on, on all of these magazines this month. You can pick them up, of course, um, at um, retailers in uh, Denmark, in Sweden, Finland, Norway, Germany, England. And they're free as always. But we've got, um, we've got two covers, basically. We've got, in, in the case of Denmark, we've got the Batman cover because we've got six pages with Batman Arkham Knight in there. Um, but we also got this um, iron cover. And it, it, it's pretty fun, actually, because we've got um, augmented reality feature on it this time. So you can download the UR app. And uh, <laughs> fancy name. Yes. And actually, um, when you point at um, the cover, it will play a video and uh, make the cover interactive. I think that's a pretty good, cool feature. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit of, of, yeah, talk about the magazine. And of course, you can pick it up for free um, at your local games retailer or library or some of the libraries at least. Yeah. Um, I think, let's see what anyone else has been writing. What more? Wow. Child of Light looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Will it be out on Vita, too? I don't Do you know? know. I think somebody else mentioned in the chat that it was a remote play game more than a... Rasmus, do you know that? Uh, Child of Light, is that coming out on the PS Vita as well? Can you take a quick look? Yeah. And we will know. Mm, best month ever, Cause of Trials Fusion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, we'll be taking a look at that now. I really want to try the... Again, no, okay, no Child of Light for the PS Vita, no. But remote play is possible, but, always, yeah, as yeah. always. Uh -huh, let's see. Uh -huh, too bad. I really want to try the new Elder Scrolls Online, yeah. I do so as well, but I am waiting for the final release. <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm Batman. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I think that concludes <laughs> us reading up from, from the chat. And now on to Trials Fusion. We are playing the beta on, um, on PC. PC. Yeah. Oh, well, when I'm saying we, I really mean uh, Philip because I'm a wuss. I'm not going to be playing a game <laughs> I'm not good at on um, live stream. So instead, so I'll I'm let gonna be playing Philip a game play a game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, let's just That's get right good. into it. All right, so we've got some basic options here. Let's just get right into the ride feature here. Crew mode, there's a couple of other f features here, but they seem to be unavailable in the beta, so we can't really get into those. But there is a multiplayer. There's a step into the light, which I don't know what it means, and track central pyro sequence. Let's just jump into career. I should probably mention that we've got, for anyone interested on, on most, uh, I know it's on the, the Finnish and I think the Norwegian and perhaps the Swedish, the English and the Danish side, we've got a preview of, of Trial Fusion anyways, if, if people want to read it. And I'm quite sure that most uh, magazines this month, if I'm correct, yeah, also have a two-page feature on... Uh, Fusion, so, um, so in case any, any of you want to read something about the game not written by complete noobs <laughs> at it, yeah. um, you should pick up the magazine. All right, so back Let's to the Let's get noob. into it. All right, so we're going to start out here in the first level just to get into it, get warmed up a bit. So we've got training program one. And again, as I mentioned, I got to try it out just a bit before the stream started, but not a huge amount. I'm just going to move the mouse out of the way here. There we go. So the controls are in the bottom there. They're pretty simple. You can lean backwards or forwards, gas, brake, last checkpoint, or restart the entire track. I'm just going to go ahead. And it really is, you know, kind of a simple game. That that's you, that's you, all you it is. You want to get the score on, and, and there's no fuss about, you know, restarting the level if, if you fail. Uh, no, it's, it's actually all like about kind of, so. all right, try again, try again, try and make the best yeah. time. 
Uh, so we've got these Good checkpoints. Good old arcade action fun. Yeah. So we've got checkpoints, and again, if I just tap, I can go straight back to the checkpoint straight away. So I can, if I can see it going wrong, I don't have to actually wait for it to... Yeah, uh, that's good. Uh, there's nothing worse than having to watch a dead sequence or something yeah. like that, you know? It's just uh, Although we do get them at the end of every run. That's kind of like their sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. All right, so this was just a very basic, this is how you go forward, this is how you go backwards kind of a tutorial. Well, let's take a look at that. We've got an hour. Yeah. So now we've got... And at least this, this is, is, is the part where it won't be with, uh, with you Googled, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so from my playthrough before I unlocked this new bike, I don't think there's any real um, kind of stats. I might be wrong, but I think they're just pretty much cosmetic in this. Because um, if I do go back and check out my garage here, say bikes. Got my baggie here and I've got the roach, and all I'm getting kind of is uh, some customization. Oh no, actually there are upgrades, Never mind. There's... Um, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, but I don't see any kind of stat screen like you're used to be able to see, you know, kind of like um, speed versus handling versus this and that. I can see our editor, our finished editor, Artu, is um, writing that. It's got um, three challenges in each stage, and um, Got some secrets there that, in in basically a split second, can can change how the the track works. Okay. Well, I have noticed those, um, but I haven't actually tried them out. So maybe we should. I can see there's like three little dots on each level yeah. here, and I've, I haven't done any of them. So I should probably just try them he's, out. He's mentioning um, actually a, a tennis um, track. Okay. Where um, suddenly it stops, and then he is in a, a tennis oh. match with a penguin. <laughs> so it, it seems like it's it's the same insane crazy um, humor that we've seen in the earlier trials games. Just you know, up right. the notch. All right. So let's just see. Uh, but it seems it, it it's going to be a, a lot of the same stuff that we've already seen um, with, with trial tracks and skill games. That still being the fundamental of the games. Um, but they are promising over a thousand objects for people who want to, you know, do it yourself, um, make your own tracks and stuff like that. So that's pretty good. Okay, see, there was my first crash. So there's a challenge here where I have to complete the track without using the lean, like leading left or right. So it's going to be tough, especially when he's doing stuff like that. But I can use my brakes, of course. So I'm going to try that challenge first. So no leaning and no crashing. It's going to be tough. Oh, especially when that happens. Ow. The FMX mode is um, one where you're trying to get as many points as possible by doing, you know, and combining different tricks. So that's something that's also in the game now. Okay. Oh, I just lost. Oh, yeah, that's because I needed some, some sound. That's cool. Sorry about that. We'll get right back into it here. Just restart the run. I think I'm getting a hang of it now to get, oh, it actually just paused it. Great, you can just keep going. Cause this whole no leaning, will he make it's this? definitely got a graphical, ah. Uh, I don't see how it's possible it's to actually, got, well. Definitely got a, a graphical improvement here. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the lean. Cause we already did the crash. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's also another one that's uh, a challenge that's, you ha I have to do 10 flips, but I can't crash during the, Ah, yeah. So let's see if I can pull that off. That seems easier than the no leaning. It's one of the things I like about the game that it really looks like it hurts whenever <laughs> he's crashing. Yeah, I noticed that before as well. I was I was at a point where I just kept. Ah, uh, no, don't, no. don't. Ah, come on. I can do this. But yeah, again, like I found myself crashing over and over at the same spot. And I got really annoyed, but then suddenly one crash just happened, and I couldn't help but laugh because it looked so silly. Oh, what am I doing? Yo, oh, I'll just, no. I'll just, I'll just finish that one here. There's also a challenge where you have to stop those turbines by finding a I hit, think you should maybe switch. you know aim for less. Less flipping? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I mean you, can, you can do that when, when you've actually got a bit more hang of, of the controls. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I said that too early. <laughs> Here in the beginning, the checkpoints are fairly uh, close to each other. Yeah. Sorry. 
it's not too bad. Yeah, so you can see even even if you're, uh, you know, really just getting a hang of the <laughs> controls and screwing everything up, it's not, you know, it's not, the end it's of the not a two two hour ride every time. It's basically just a few seconds. Boom. But yeah, it's very, you have to get kind of used to the physics in this game. You can easily get into this situation where your bike just starts bouncing kind of uncontrollably. And boom. I know I'm, I'm going to get a lot of people saying, hey, are you crazy uh, for saying this? But actually, it reminds me a bit of uh, Killzone Shadowfall. Uh, with the style, you've got the, the white and yeah, orange stuff, and you've got yeah, that the, the old futuristic approach. The color palette, um, yeah. Are we? I don't have a game sound. Can you go out and uh, send it to HDMI? Yeah, we're, we're just, just going to try and change the game sound. So let's see. Oh, I'm looking at that screen up there now. Um. Uh, Bowser, Biohazard, yeah, this is uh, for the PC um, that we're playing this at the moment, yeah. So, uh, guys behind the camera, which one am I going for here? One, two, three, four, or five? All, I've only got the one there plugged in. Hold on, maybe. So to the Evo Media, I think. The which one? Evo Media, the one already checked. Um. Yeah. And it's uh, looks like it's already it's done like as set uh, as default. Is there anything else uh, enabled? No, nothing else is enabled here. We got the digital output. Is that what we want? Issues. Now they're having a huge debate of uh, um, infamous uh, Second Son and Watch Dogs. Okay. Basically going like, yeah, well, you can, you can see they, they need to forget about, you know, uh, the old generation of consoles because it's always going to, you know... Yeah, hold back the new... Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, but well, of course, I, I agree with that. Um, if, if you look at uh, stuff like Assassin's Creed Black Flag and stuff like that, they, they really had to scale it back. But then again, I, I, I think one of the reasons that we're seeing those differences between Watch Dogs and, and Infamous Try to disable that one. are basically that um, Infamous is made for one console and not, you know, both uh, Xbox One and um, PS4. That should make it much easier. And I'm quite sure that, that um, they had a lot of, of support. Yeah. On, on Infamous when, when making that, but it also seems like Infamous is a much more compact, yeah. smaller Tracks game. Yeah, try game. Okay. The so They're just hammering away, trying to get everything to work, yeah. So we're getting any sound now? Let's get a try loading up another level here. Apologies for the technical issues. That's how it goes when you're live. We are going to um, shoot the responsible people from DRTV <laughs> after the program because we need them. We, we really need them right now. <laughs> um, and then hopefully we'll be able to you know, control the cameras and do stuff ourselves tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. That that's how, that's how we'll well. do it. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know see exactly any problems with that. So, so no sound? No sound. Okay. All right, well, um, I will, I will uh, you know, discreetly go. Oh, well, hold on. Clonk. Oh, clonk. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That was so I'll, I'll be providing the sound effects. <laughs> That's at least something useful I can do. Uh, I'm just going to finish this run quickly because I think I might have an idea what can be tried to fix the sound if I don't crash like that. And here we go. New personal record, too. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm gonna try and jump out again here. And sorry about the. Okay, speakers not plugged in. See, I disabled that before. I think if I re enable it, no. Um, how to do show disabled devices. I'll try and re enable this and make this the default. Maybe this will. 
In case you are wondering, I, I, I never concluded my ramblings about Infamous and, and Watch. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I think you actually just should, um, if, if you're watching this live now, you should join our Game Reactor live chat. And you can basically read what they are. Especially, I think it's Franco and Chat4 who's having um, a huge discussion about uh, these two games and why it needs to go away with um, the cross buys and the support <laughs> for older consoles and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's what they said about the new uh, Arkham Knight. There, there was a reason that they weren't coming out on last gen consoles, was because they needed more, like, they, it wouldn't work. Of they, course. they needed the power of the new systems, and I think we're going to see that happening more and more. And of I can course, also see well. the idea that, you know, yeah, if it has to work on the PS3, then they might uh, skip some development time on the PS4. But they, sure, they need to do that now. I, I agree on, on, on that, actually, because, and also, I mean, you, you're getting a, a PS3 really cheap, and there's tons of good games out for that system already, and you've got great games like The Last of Us and stuff like that yeah. uh, for the PS3 and, and I think people should just be happy with that and accept that some of the new big titles won't be coming out because they do need to move, move forward if, if we want to see exactly. you know, leaving graphical quality and stuff like that. Old, old and systems also old. In, in right. AI and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, times are changing, we're moving on and I mean... We're, we're having like, it, it's about 10 years now. Yeah. Into the 10 years lifespan, so that's pretty good. And I mean, of course, you're going to see the, like we saw with the PS2 and PS3, we're going to see the God of War type games still come out, kind of trickling out here, but slowly we're going to start moving fully into the next generation. So, And it's easy to say, oh, well, come on, everybody, hop on board. But when there's not enough, at least PS4s out there to, <laughs> for everyone, then of <laughs> yeah, course that, it can that's, be. That's a huge problem, isn't it? So yeah, because they keep pushing that. Like they were pretty confident uh, around release time. There'll be enough consoles out yeah, for but, Christmas but, but sales. Yeah, but we all knew they were bullshitting. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, then, it, it then it they've said April. It, it was so simple to see that that basically Sony uh, went okay. Microsoft is, you know, they are having tons of problems with um, not being able to go out in all territories with the Xbox One. Yeah, and um, it, it was quite clear that Sony didn't want that kind of backlash. So they just said, hey, we, we are releasing in all territories, don't worry, and we're quite sure there'll be enough consoles. And all of us were just going like, but how are you going to support so many consoles? You're not. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you must be lying happen. here, you know. And you, at least you know that you won't be able to support yeah. all the people who want the console. Yeah. And, and of course, they've gone on, on basically on, on record now saying that, well, it, it won't be... Um, a satisfying situation until about summer. Yeah, they push it um, to summer now, yeah. So. But I mean, I've seen people uh, around shopping malls in Denmark carrying a new box around, so it's just about keeping your, your ears to the ground, kind of figuring out where they get new batches. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have a friend who actually uh, called me this Friday and, and asked if, I mean, he had he checked three or four different sites, and none of those had the PS4. And and I just heard a rumor that Bilka had them yeah. um, that day, and and he was like, okay, okay, I'm going to check. And he ended up checking eight places in total uh, uh, before he called me, and and then um, he called Bilka and said, uh, yeah, we're not sure, you know. Yeah, we we've got like, let's see, we've got a bundle with. with Kill zone or some game, <laughs> and and then it just got it, you know. And yeah. they're like, yeah, we, we do have, you know, some PS4s lying around, and it's crazy, but but it just, you know, it's just about keeping your eyes open. Yeah. Okay, so. Anyways, we're back at uh, the trials. Uh, you never got the sound to work, did you? I don't think I did. No. Um, um, that's why I'm, I'll be quitting tomorrow. You know, <laughs> I'll be just like I can't work with this anymore. Uh oh, <laughs> I almost let that one happen just to see it happen. All right. Oh. There we go. I think, was this the level I was having trouble with earlier? Oh. No, what are you doing? No, not. No. Oh. <laughs> Checkpoint's right there, though. Oh, no. It's it's pretty nice because it seems that they're fully aware when you're going to screw up. Yeah. Because the checkpoints are just placed exactly, you know, <laughs> where you will be screwing up. And I think that's that's a good thing. They know their game design. Oh no. Uh, mm. 
But yeah, the environments in this game are pretty, uh, pretty nicely done. And I do love whenever they do like like these fantasy environments in, instead of trying to go <laughs> realistic or anything like that because this just looks like uh, I mean any, anything could happen here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so and that's probably why I like you know compared to to realistic uh, racing games as well. I do like stuff like uh, and Sonic and uh, Mario Kart games because yeah, karting games I mean, are always it's, great. It's, it's, it's just great fun to look at, at the environments here. And that's the same goes for Wipeout and, and F Zero. Yeah. Well, I think I might have started the same level again. We don't want to play the same level twice. I like that there's a uh, there's a link straight to customer support. It might be a beta thing. Cause uh, I can imagine people getting kind of oh, annoyed at the, the game and just Huh? Oh which which yeah. part? Uh, no, if if you go into the menu here you actually have a a customer support option mm. right there, so I'm guessing that it's 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 for the beta. I yeah. don't know if it's going to be in the full version because I could imagine a lot of people spamming the customer support because they get, get <laughs> frustrated with the game. <laughs> yeah. All right, this was the oh. one that really kicked my behind earlier because th this is one of the ones where there isn't really a checkpoint for a good while. This is all about not getting into that whole bouncy situation. Taking it slow, and then at some point you need to go fast. So here, Ooh. yeah, exactly, and all the way back to the beginning. Oh, and it's just so now they're beginning to punish you a bit. Yeah, exactly. I think, th yeah, this is the final level of the um, of the. So chapter. I might as well show you what you're in for. Yeah, I think they're going to end every chapter with kind of a bit of a punishing level. An explosion there. All right, so this is the point where it always gets me. Just gonna roll, nice and easy. I'll just sit there and go like, do something else. <laughs> I mean, constructive criticism. Do something else. What are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Ah oh, man. Yeah, this is where it's gonna get tough for me. Nope, not. Oh, he keeps doing that. Oops. And they're still on about the whole uh, cross Tien. But they're saying a good point, the, the new Metal Gear is also cross Tien, and that Metal is pretty on the new consoles, and that does. does look amazing. But that's also to the point where, I mean, it depends on the game, because I could also imagine that some games are going to be pretty... I mean, look at Battlefield. That, that's um, yeah. Uh, Last-gen version is definitely a watered-down version of the full mm. game, and you're actually kind of cheating yourself out of the experience, because there's content missing if you get it on last-gen. That's what I'm saying. I, I think, I, I mean, comparing Watch Dogs to Infamous is a bit unfair in this regard because it's a much, uh, Infamous seems to be a much more compact experience. And yeah. The same goes for Metal Gear Solid. So, of course, that would be easier to port uh, between the different uh, generations of consoles. Exactly, yeah. Um, where it seems like Watch Dogs is, is really trying to do something more. I mean, it, it seems like you actually do control the whole world and not just, you know... <laughs> The usual sandbox elements. Yeah. Sony were playing it smart indeed. Uh, Microsoft's problem is that they're just too greedy, but that's a whole other subject. Well, I don't think so. I mean, if, if it, it, it seems like to me, it seems like gamers always have this notion that, you know, indie, indie developers are really nice guys, you know, and, and they just do it for fun. And, yeah. and all the other guys are really evil and they want to earn money. Oh my god, <laughs> you made a company and you want to earn money? Yeah, who do you think That's you are? That's insane. And uh, come on, of course they want to earn money, but so do the indie, indie developers. I mean, they're all hoping as well to get, you know, um, to, to, to get a product that will sell a lot. Yeah. And you've got a, a few notable uh, exceptions, like, like um, Notch and, and the whole Minecraft, where, where they were going like, he wasn't really into it for the money, but no. but then suddenly he got really rich, yeah. and um, so you got these. But but I mean, don't kid yourself. Um, if you make a company, of course you want to make money. Of course you can debate whether or not they're always doing it um, in in the best way. But but I don't really think it seems like Microsoft have done any, you know, evil stuff that deserves you know them being slapped for just caring about money. Because I don't really think they did a lot of that. No. On, on, on the Xbox. I think they actually have a pretty great product, but 
they weren't able to deliver it in, in all territories, and that is a shame, and that is something I, I wish they were just being honest about it, saying, hey, yeah, go buy it, we will release you know, an English version, and, and, and you can get a patch later or a firmware update or something, so you can speak Danish to your Kinect, <laughs> that's what you want. I mean, f I couldn't care less, I just want the console now. Yeah. But I mean, here in Denmark, there have been, re been retailers have that have been importing them for people. Oh, yeah. So you can buy it with the Danish exactly. warranties. Yeah, that, that's yeah. also a great way of just solving that problem. But it's just, I, 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 I want to feel like I'm actually buying the official product. And, and I wouldn't mind, you know, it being English. But I, 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 just, I just want to know that I bought it from Microsoft and not, you know, from some retail chain that are providing the, the warranty because you never know what Microsoft suddenly is going to decide, you know, mm -mm. happens to those users. Even though I doubt anything will happen. But no. So how is it going here in Not great. Fusion I'm Land? You are constantly doing that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not being my favorite. I, I've gotten a bit further than that. It's just I need to get this speed just right and not flop on my face. All right, here. So, nice and easy. Oh, it seems this whole uh, leaning thing is pretty tough when you're in the air. It's not like you can really do a lot of aftertouch. Okay. So, it needs to be while you're on the ground. Uh, a banker saying, well, let me put it like this, Lee. Sony, in my opinion, is the lesser of two evils. No, they're just the smarter ones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they, they watched Microsoft's press conference, and, and they, you, you could basically hear from, from Sony's press conference a day later that they had been taking notes during, during the Microsoft ones, and, and they were just doing... Ev they, they had looked at everything Microsoft did wrong, yeah. and then they just went out and did the opposite. Exactly. And it, it was so clear. I mean, okay, Microsoft is talking too much about TV features. Scrap it. We're not going to talk about that at all. No. Even though now they, they are, they're mentioning that they're going to have an exclusive TV series for PSN, and they're going to... Um, 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 that, uh, actually, that's based on um, Powers, that uh, comic book yeah. uh, that was out. So they're going to have an exclusive TV series on PSN. And they're, they're really talking about all that uh, TV stuff now, because now they know people have forgotten that you know they hated it <laughs> and um, that PS4 is for the gamers. Yeah. And and it's it, it's a smart move. And of course, Microsoft didn't mention anything about the smaller indie titles. So uh, Sony went out and said, "We've got all these crazy good indie titles because we're supporting those as well." So they got tons of goodwill basically just by listening to what Microsoft did say wrong yeah. and then doing the opposite. And, and even if they had that planned, even if they had a TV series network planned, they just kept their mouth shut about it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and that was smart. So, so don't think it, it's anything about them being the lesser of two evils. They were just the smarter ones. <laughs> And, and they didn't fall into that. Uh, I, I think actually Microsoft were kind of trying to be honest about what they were planning and what they were doing. And it just backfired because no one wanted to hear that. They wanted to hear about the games. And, exactly. and admittedly, Microsoft talked way too little about the games at, at the first uh, oh, unwheeling yeah, sure. of the Xbox One. And that was definitely a, a huge mistake, even though they were trying to you know, tell people that the console could do so many different things. But yeah. I figure out why I'm doing so badly here. Okay, this is that's a skill. Good. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that skill game. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to fix it, but I'm not able to balance left or right in this uh, level. Yeah, okay. Which is why I'm having such a hard time. And every time I start like going over the handlebars, I can't really fix it. Ah, uh, okay. So it's all about my uh, my gas and my brakes here. So see there, I can't do anything about that. Um, but I finished somehow. And I got the result. New personal best record. <laughs> Come on, Philip. Third time's the charm. <laughs> well, it, it's ten times the charm, isn't it? I think it's more like 30, but <laughs> there's a three in there. 
All right, let's just get into the next chapter here. I managed to finish it. I guess the skill challenge wasn't actually reaching the finish line. It was doing some challenge within. I didn't catch, but it gave me a gold medal, so. All right, so. I'm going to do a refill on my water. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and try and see if I can't. So steep hills, lean forward. That's nice. Sometimes you'll need to balance yourself properly to prevent a crash. So, just need to, whoops, that is tough. Ah. Boom, there we go, checkpoint. Let's try a backflip. All right, already done a couple of those, shouldn't be too hard. Woo. And I can go down there. Jump forward off a ramp instead of going up. Just lean forward. Okay. Let's give that a go. Little front flip there. And boom, finish. So time to put the new moves to use. Decent start there. Ooh, even it out. Nice. Warning unnecessary ramps ahead. I see. So it's not about catching every single ramp. Oh my, did I just do a perfect run? Yes. So gold medal there. Got to level seven. Okay, let's try and check out some of these challenges again. Perform at least four flips from a single jump. We'll try and do that. I think I've done more than that in the earlier levels. Just need to find the right jump to do it on. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, starting to... Can I do four there? One, two, three, no. Let's get past this one up to the next checkpoint. This one here could be interesting. One, no, just one. Ah, keep hitting the checkpoint button. Okay, backflips, two, three. Oh, here we go. This is going to be it. One, two, three, four. So, did it check off? Four flips from a single jump. I did that, didn't I? Hmm. Maybe it unlocks when I get past the finish line. Boom. New personal record. See the results. Nine volts. Shivering aisles. Okay, here we go. Mm. 
Oh, oh, oh. I know I'm not playing this as the big stunt man, but being new at the game, I really need to take it slow. Otherwise, yeah, that happens. Damn it. Go face first down there. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Shoot across. Nice. Need to remember this whole leaning forward while going up hills. And boom, made it through. <laughs> Love that they always kill off the guy at the end. And I'm back again. Lee's How's back. It going? <laughs> it's going better. I'm, go I'm moving okay. forward. Cool. We actually did, um, we did an interview, or R2 did, he's really into trials. Uh, he did an interview with the creative director. Okay. And I think we're going to show that. We're yeah. We're just looking it up right now. Um, yeah, it's going on. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can't touch anything. No, like exactly, I wasn't sure if it was alive. Um, it's about five minutes with uh, the creative director and it's um, R2 doing this. So I think we should watch it because at least then people will know a bit more about the game. Let's do um, it. Are you ready over there? <laughs> I win. Yeah, we just need to switch up two things so you guys can see it too, and it's not just uh, for our benefit that we're watching it. Yeah, we're just watching it. Yeah, it's, like, it's incredible. So we're going to watch an interview. I never thought R2 would go on a show nude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so surprised. Uh, yeah, it's a shame you guys can't see this. Yeah, hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> Worst a live stream ever. Let's see. It's Something how it goes. It, it, when, when the, uh, we're, trying to, we're going to show this, and then we'll see if we can fix the sound issues. On, on we are here in Helsinki, uh, yeah. interviewing key figures uh, for the upcoming uh, uh, Trials Fusion. Uh, and we are joining here with Antti Ilvesso, who is the cre uh, cre uh, creative director of the game. Uh, what kind of new main feature are we looking up for the game? Uh, generally, first thing, first time ever, we are going for multi-platform. So it's for PS4, Xbox One, Xbox 360 and PC. Also, we have totally new world. We have new bike, quad bike, and also we have FMX trick system, where you are going on the rider with totally new way. Uh, you said it was uh, it's coming on multiple platforms. Uh, how does how does that have uh, been affecting the uh, making of the game? Like, do you have uh, new options or w w what are the features that you couldn't do before and you can do do now on the next gen consoles? Well, generally, it's it's more fluid, more higher resolution, but also it's like what we could do. We could first time offer it on multi platform, and that wouldn't have been possible without a huge good team. Uh, what about the like the uh, game world? Uh, we saw that uh, you can. It almost uh, felt like a uh, open world kind of gameplay area that you can uh, choose and make tracks. Uh, what kind of new features are we looking for uh, there? Uh, from level editor wise, we haven't break at the level editor. There's f more fine tu tuning uh, things you can do in editor and huge amount of objects and like. It's like you can create more stuff with the tools you, you already know. So people who have been using the evolution editor, they, they can do more stuff and more tools. You, uh, can you still create like uh, mini games and uh, like uh, what kind of, uh, are there any new, new kinds of tracks that you can do but you, that you couldn't do before in evolution? One thing that is huge in Trials Fusion is that each of the tracks has three challenges and those challenges can be really difficult. For example, you may end up in a tennis match against Ping Ping or like you are doing some secret stunts, flying against some track and it's really important. Every of one of those challenges and features we have done has been done by using the tools we had also and players have. We don't have any secret editors in our use. People, used, people can create everything what we have created. Uh, what kind of challenges are we look, uh, looking for? 
there's 120 challenges and every challenge is different. That's really important thing. So maybe you have to, uh, maybe you have to reverse one track back or this third person track in a way, or there's a secret like puzzle in a way that you have to find your way out of the maze, or you have to fly through hula hoops, or you have to play against tennis match against penguin or you have to find the secret way of penguins what they're doing stuff uh what about uh, you said there's a new new uh, quad bike like a four wheeler any other new bikes uh that's kind of the one obviously every bike is at the core it's new bike but that's something that is has different physics in a way that you have to drive it also differently so four wheeler has also the front wheels are working so you have to kind of put those first on the ground in a normal bike you put the back wheel down so that's kind of different driving mechanism totally for new players uh, can you still uh, uh, customize your riders and bikes yes there's lots of customization options so you can have a different let's say uh, when, when, let's think about how the customization works in evolution we had lots of different parts but they didn't fit together so in Drive Fusion we had made in a way that every suite you have evolves. So if you want to select that, hey, I want to develop my police driver suite, it evolves and makes it more tougher, more cooler looking. So if you see that kind of player, you see that, hey, that guy has played a lot. All right, all right. Thank you very much. And we are looking forward to get to play the game more. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a bit about the game, and that was thanks to our Finnish editor, Artu. Yep. Um, as you might notice, um, it's also um, out on the mobile in a, in a different kind of version, a, a simplified one. But but we've actually seen quite a lot of, of especially this genre, do very well with touch. Yeah. Because basically you can you can have um, sort of an auto accelerator, and then you can just have the, the flip buttons on, on anywhere on the sides of the screen so it, it usually works pretty well yeah um speaking of working pretty well we're not still sure if we've got sound on the game but i just say continue playing and we'll um, give it a go if we don't have any sound too bad yeah It'll only be the sound of crashes anyway so so moving on to a level i haven't tried yet so this can be interesting Again, they really up the ante on, on the graphical style and the whole particle effects and snowstorm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff Probably going on here. Ooh, go! I'm just gonna take it nice and easy. And then, oh my god. Ah, there we go. Whoa. Ah, then I crashed. Yeah. <laughs> but it was right at a checkpoint, so we're good. Another checkpoint right next to that, so. Another one right here. Uh, I think they're aiming for, you know, people trying to do a lot of tricks here. Exactly. And, uh, I'm, that's, I'm that's why you're just trying to get I'm just through it alive. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I don't care about tricks. I just want to live. I just want to see the environments. <laughs> he has to die. We've also seen uh, other games like this come out on different formats. I mean, I believe Trials has been more of an, uh, a Microsoft game on the Xbox 360. Um, yeah, early on, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the PS3, uh, not too long ago, had the uh, Joe Danger game come out, which is pretty much the same genre, a bit more, or a lot more cartoony, but the same idea where you have this kind of physics-based uh, bike game. Yeah, but that's, that's the same for, for the iOS, though, though I wouldn't, you know totally compare these two because this is a lot more about doing the tricks. Yeah. I think a, a more fair comparison would be, um, what was it, um, the other uh, PS Vita game. Um, oh, uh, Urban Trials. Uh, Legends. Legends or yeah. something. Yeah. So, yeah. That was, that was a decent game. It wasn't uh, by any stretch as, as good as, as the real Trials games, but it was still a decent um, one, especially if, if you had the Vita and just wanted yeah. to have a bit of lighthearted fun. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very much a genre now at this point, uh, this whole kind of trial and error, trying to 
do the jumps Ooh. just right. <laughs> hey, we unlocked a new environment. Urban sprawl. Okay, so bronze medal for that one. So let us continue. Fusion factory. The R2 is his name. It, it's actually R2 and, and uh, what are you? Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we're calling you R2D2. <laughs> and that's pretty, um, that's awesome. I mean, R2D2, it doesn't get much better than that. So we've got a bit of Tron inspired. Yeah, there's Tron a lot of stuff going on right now, for sure. Oh, that looks that uh, looks cool with the tracks <laughs> sort of foaming in front of you. Oh. Woohoo! Go 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 go! <laughs> quite the roller coaster ride. Oh yeah. Oh no. It's starting to get tricky now. Try it again here. A lot of speed, and then correcting it. Oh, he, I need to correct it a lot more before I hit that egg. Oh, it's really <laughs> tough at that point. Okay, so go around. There we go. Moving along. Nope. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I hate it when I overcompensate. That's what's great about this game, too. When a run goes perfectly, it just feels so good. It feels like you're mm. just But even, even if it goes wrong, you are still having a laugh. Well, at least for the first, you know, 20 times. <laughs> 20 times, and it's no longer laughing. And it gets a bit stale, you know, going <laughs> like, well, why the... Oh, oh. <laughs> and mm -hmm. finish line, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course. <laughs> so bronze medal for that one. Game wasn't impressed. No, nah, but we, we're happy, you know. It's, it's not about winning, it's about being there, you know, being <laughs> part of it. <laughs> no, it's not, it's about winning always. All right, so this is a skill game, big air. So I don't know, I didn't check the description because I'm not smart. Bail out with, at the end of the jump, to soar like an eagle, okay. Okay, so that was not, that was, I thought the jump was coming further down. Mm. Let's try that again. And it's, it's space, or, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I like him flapping with his arms. You know, He's an eagle. I can fly. <laughs> All right, so we managed to get through the snowy area. Time to move on to what looked like kind and of. We've got a bag full of bronze medals. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Become a stuntman on April 5th. So besides being a, um, a beta, it's kind of like a demo. We can't really... Yeah, we can't play ca Can't more. continue playing until the game releases. So I don't know if we have any other real options here. Track Central, everything else seems to be locked. Did we unlock You could, any? of course, try to, to get a few more medals in some of the... That's... I mean, now you're pro, aren't you? Exactly, now I can flap my You can't my create, wings. can you? Um, um, yeah. No, I don't, I don't think I, creation I don't think so, was trying. Yeah. yeah, okay. Nothing is really um, open at the moment. No. And there's a season pass option I can see, so there's also going to be DLC for the game, which is what's to be expected. Right, let's try and gold medal this first one here. That should be possible at my skill level now. Can you choose another bike, actually, now? Uh, yeah, this is actually the second bike I unlocked, so the okay. first bike, I've, but I can go back to trying out that in the, in the next one. 
Let's just check real quick again. Now this is the one where I have to do 10 flips and no faults and so on. Let's just try and get the gold here. Oh yeah. Someone who's a brand coach writing. After 30 times, you probably need a new keyboard. That's true. <laughs> And then he's saying, Flabby Bird, please, I mean, that game, I am so tired of that and all its clones. I mean, it wasn't even a good game to begin with. No. And, and now you've, it's basically screwed up the um, App Store for me because, I mean, whenever I, I, I use stuff like App Shop and stuff like that to, to, to track with new game styles. Yeah. And you are, I'm not kidding if I say I think you have about 100 new Flabby Bird clones coming out every day. Yeah. But I mean, Apple so are trying to do something like both Apple and Android market are trying to fix that by, um, they've gotten a lot more strict when it comes to re those uh, releases when you submit them for... Uh, well, Apple always ha ha has been strict about this. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, they, they, they can't, you know, hinder anyone in making a clone. If uh, well, that's to. what they're doing, actually, from what I hear. They actually, like, there's been a situation where people have made Flappy Birds clones where if you do, uh, submit it to Apple, you'll get an email back saying, we're sorry, this uh, product is too close to other products on the store. Please oh, really? Renew it. And uh, I, what I love even better is Android. You just get a message back saying, uh, spam. <laughs> oh, oh, my <laughs> Your product God. is spam. So they are, they're, they're tired of it themselves. They don't okay. want any more. It's part of it now. They've updated their uh, terms. So, Yeah, yeah but you, it, it reminds me of, of, of the, the, the big video game crash in the 80s. Yeah. We basically had, you know, a tie uh, going out with, um, I mean, uh, E.T., the game. Yeah. They made more <laughs> games than they had consoles. Yeah. Uh, why? <laughs> and, and the game was awful. It, w it was really a disaster. I remember seeing it something is. on YouTube about that. That was hilarious. And, like, um, nobody knew what was going on. I remember on. playing it <laughs> and thinking, I really like the movie. I want the game. <laughs> Even though I hated the game, you know, it was just like, it's E.T. Yeah, it's, come on, it's E.T. It's, no, it's not. It's a couple of blocks and you can make him, you know, stretch his neck and <laughs> you walk around in these places and you have no idea what you're doing. I mean, I've, I understand why, why Nintendo made that seal of quality. Um, that they yeah. actually did in the 80s because they, in, in a way, they saved um, the game's business because you had that huge crash, you had so many hopeful developers and, and you had a lot of developers making really, to be honest, shit games. And, and we're seeing the same thing on mobiles now. We're seeing them trying to, you know, spew out these clones and they are so poorly made. It's, it's an easy platform to develop for too. It's easy to get into. That's why we're seeing so much of this. I mean, that's where sure. with consoles nowadays, like PC, it's easy to ignore these kinds of things. But on consoles and on handhelds where you have this one-stop sh shop to get everything, yeah. you don't actually have to go out of your way to visit a website to get a hold of a game. Then, um, th then it's started to become really prevalent. And, and yeah, things have to change for... Uh, for mobile gaming to kind of not go down the same way as what was happening in the 80s. It's I actually, um, speaking of the App Store, I just did a review today of uh, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Yeah. Game Love Game, new Game Love Game based on um, on the movie, of course, and, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It, it's got cell shading, and they went for uh, um, a horizontal um, kind of gameplay, so you, you're, you're playing like this on the iPad, yeah. and uh, it's, it's for sort of an arcade brawler, and it, it really suits the game. That's cool. Yeah, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 10. Um, what went wrong? It, it's, well, basically, it's a bug fest. Game Loft have said that they're going to, you know, um, hotfix this within the week, but it had, I mean, it had some really nice ideas. You, you're basically controlling Captain America, and you, you've got um, you know two soldiers um, helping you, two shield agents helping you. Yeah. And um, then you just go around, you know, killing baddies. Um, and you can upgrade all your stats and stuff uh, with a gem system that's basically similar to Diablo. Okay. Um, where where you, you're finding different colored gems, and you can combine yeah, them and get even more powerful stuff. gems and so on. After about, I think, four hours of play, uh, my gems are bugged out. So I couldn't see which gems I was trying to combine anymore. And um, after another hour or so, I couldn't even combine the gems anymore. So I could never, you know, sort of improve my characters. You, you had a, another one where you could research your characters. So you can make them stronger. You can make, you can make 
stuff there as well. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, improve my gem levels on, on the character, so I was basically stuck in the water there. Um, but luckily enough, there was another bug. Um, the, the save game has got a mind of its own. And uh, I've seen reports from different players talking about this, uh, but, but at some point it might decide, well, it, it's still going to s s do your save game, but maybe your coins is tied to an old save. Ah, okay, yeah, I see. So uh, I had about 4,000 coins. When I closed down the app and opened it again, I had 66,000. <laughs> so I spent these on upgrading my soldiers, closed the app, and then I had 66,000 again. Oh, okay. So I maxed out the headquarters, all my soldiers, <laughs> everything, and it was just a breeze, you know, to, to walk through the game. Yeah, yeah. Even though they all had level 1 gems because I couldn't upgrade that because <laughs> I mean, when going into the gem screen, it wouldn't show the correct gems, and then it would um, also remove the button that made me able to, you know, skip the screen. So I would have to go to the shop to, and then uh, exit the shop to get a button to exit the gem creation process. <laughs> I mean, That's how do you sounds read something great. like that? I, yeah, the, I, I'm thinking the same thing right now. How can that pass certification? The, the worst part is that the game actually has some really nice touches. Uh, I, I do like the, the fighting mechanics, and you've got a virtual joypad. You've got um, a swipe gestures, if, if you prefer that. Yeah. Uh, again, as I said, it looks awesome. And um, you've got a lot of content. Um, it took me about, I think, four hours to complete um, maybe 20 stages or something, and there's 100-plus stages in it. So, so tons of content, but they just screwed it up, and, and I, I called GameLoft and said, OK, I, I need a box fix, box fix report, and I need to know what you're going to fix, because I would like to actually tell people that you're planning to fix some of these things, if you're planning yeah. to fix them. Exactly. Um, but it won't influence my character I'm, I'm, uh, or my, my grade. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but you're looking at a two or three out of ten. <laughs> yeah, and, um, I mean. It's just bad, but the game could be great, but it isn't. And that's, that's really a that's shame. That's too bad. Um, well, now, enough of, of the iOS and app, <laughs> app Store. Well, I just managed to level up to level 10, so I unlocked some stuff. I'm going to go into the garage here. I think I unlocked a new costume for my guy. Cool. Because I'm kind of went a bit crazy though with the gold medals. Oh, wait, is this the right place? Maybe it's Ryder. There we go. You know, it has an exclamation point on the bikes as well. I guess it's more kind of. Oh, look at that outside outfit. <laughs> that I looks think that's the one I just Come unlocked. on, that looks amazing. So I have to pay the in game currency to get it, but let's just go for it because I got plenty. Uh, so yeah, I guess yeah. What you were seeing, you were seeing the top level uh, uh, stuff. So that's well, how it goes. There's this, a style. This is okay, but come on, here. that it looks like something out of well. So futuristic Mad Max. Ooh. You can have a squirrel outfit apparently, or a squirrel head on, and a frowning clown. And this is where we go again with the UPlay that mm. Ubisoft are kind of try to push down people's throats a bit too much. If yeah, but that's me. the same with, I mean, Origin and all the other. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, not, not I mean, that I've, I condone it. I've got it, so uh, many you play points anyway, so I just go straight in there, bang, 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 unlock all the yeah. pretty things, and then I've got it. I mean, because every time you just in, like start playing a Ubisoft game on your account, I believe that adds points. So you're never really out of points, and you've got like a few challenges in the game. So you're never actually kind of scrounging for points to get that unlock in one game by playing other mm. games, but we'll see how it changes down the line. Okay, so I've got an exclamation point here, so I must have some kind of unlock going on. It's just a color thing. Let's see, I've got a mouse here so I can... The only movie license games are like those far the Batman titles. Well, I, I do think the Batman, uh, or well, uh, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, I actually like that. It was sort of um, continuing the movie's plot. Okay. Um, I did like that, and I think, speaking of mobile games, um, The Amazing Spider-Man uh, Total Mayhem is an awesome 
Spider-Man game. And it's basically a brawler slash platformer, but it's really enjoyable. And that was made by Gameloft as well. Okay. So they can do this well. Uh, and they actually did a, a pretty decent uh, Amazing Spider-Man sandbox game as well. And they're coming out with um, a second one. I know we've got the trailer for that one on um, the Game Boy Actor sites as well, if you want to check it out. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's coming a, a full-blown um, Amazing Spider-Man game as well for consoles and, and PC, as far as I remember. Um, so it could be well, but, but, but it's true. Batman is, is one of the best licenses yeah. out there. And also Rocksteady have, gone out, Rocksteady have gone out and said they're done with, with that now as well, because mm. they don't want to yeah, kind of yeah. be the ones to drive that into the ground. That's I true. mean, Warner Brothers are free to do what they want, but I think they would take heed in kind of doing the same thing and just saying, all right, yeah. we had our fun. I think the League of Marvel Superheroes is actually a pretty good game. Uh, I mean, it, it's got excellent co-op and it's got a huge sandbox game and tons of characters. Yeah. I think if, if you're really into to the superhero universe or, or Lego, um, that is the one to pick. And of course, DC Universe Online. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, we're not getting a lot more out of this, are we? No, I think this is, uh, we've, we've pretty much milked it for what it's worth. I mean, 18% completed here. But we're kind of stuck behind this um, either unavailable in beta or yeah. released kind of um, But it seems like it will be, uh, well, about 100 of levels. And uh, as usual, you will get all the player-created content as well. And I think yeah, that's, that's one good. of the things I really like about these kind of games. Yeah. You're getting these insane challenges. And <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. How are we on time? We are about three minutes left. Yeah. So I think we should maybe just conclude this, and um, I can do you know one last ad for our, our magazine. Yeah. Remember to pick it up, and of course it's free and it's out now, and we've got it in uh, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Germany, and England, and of course you can pick up our iPad magazine as well. You can download that for free. You can get our apps for Android. Um, that was newly designed again, uh, redesigned. And you can get um, the iOS app, and you can watch us on Samsung smart TVs, and you can go to um, your PlayStation browser and watch DRTV as well there. And yep. of course, you've got all our websites in uh, nine different countries now. So, so yeah, I think you've got plenty of options if you need more Game Reactor. Yeah, and of okay. course, you've got Game Reactor Live. Um, and that's every weekday from 1600 to 1800 Central European time. And sometimes you even get Game Reactor Live with sound. I mean, it is <laughs> unbelievable, but that's one of the features, you know, we have implemented. It's really o cool. Only for premium users. Yeah, 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 yeah of, of course, <laughs> premium users, or, or what we like to call it, plus, plus, plus users. Yeah. I mean, that, that's totally awesome. And once in a while, you even get, you know, a free smile. Yeah. So. Um, so. I think that's it for today, and um, we will be leaving. Oh, I'm going home now. I'm yep. not going to play Captain America. I'm going to play Shattered Planet. That's an Android and <laughs> iOS game. It's roguelike, and it's free, and that is almost an ad, isn't it? But go pick it up, Shattered Planet. It's fun, and it's stupid, and so am I today, I think. Yep. But um, thank you for watching, and see you again. <laughs>